All right, this is gonna be a quick video going over my first iteration of my EDF Arduino-based monocopter. I'm trying to learn Arduino this summer, and this seemed like a cool project that I could tackle with parts I already had on hand. This is very much a work in progress. I'm already working on the second iteration, but I figured this would be a cool point to document progress. So to not waste your time, I'm going to go straight into the testing section if you don't really care about the design process or considerations. So I tested this around a bunch of pillows and basically prayed that it wouldn't hit the wooden floor. This had trouble even getting off the launch pad, but it's interesting because at every test, the monocopter leans towards the side with the Arduino on it, and it can't recover from this unbalance. Additionally, it took a lot of throttle to get this thing moving. So with these two things, it's pretty obvious that there's a balancing and thrust issue that matters a lot more than the actual thrust vectoring right now because it's preventing me from even getting in the air and observing the controls in the first place. You can see with this very scientific flower test that the thrust vanes do actually move the air. Here, I'm manually controlling the servos with my Flasguy TX and blowing on and off these flowers to show that the air moves based on servo movement. And then here's a short clip from a TikTok I made a few days back going over basically the same thing with the shirt. Scientific shirt test. So now let's talk a little about the design and explain why I kind of thought of these problems beforehand, how I attempted to solve them, but why it ultimately wasn't enough. This design uses a 64mm EDF, which has an ideal maximum thrust of about 1.2kg. I'm running a 4S 850mAh LiPo, an MPU 6050 as a gyroscope and accelerometer unit, and a FlySky i6 receiver and TX. And then for the flight controller, I'm using an Arduino Uno. All these parts were 3D printed using this black PLA Plus, which has held up really well in past applications. Weight is not really much of a factor here, and so I chose durability over weight savings. I know I could have used something like lightweight PLA. I catted all these auxiliary parts around the EDF housing. The EDF itself is secured in two bolts, which does nothing really except wrap the duct. The auxiliary parts like the receiver and micro servers have their own housings, which I super glue and then plastic weld. The battery and ESC are located on this upper structure that sits above the intake. Structurally, I'm very happy with this design. The 3D pen and super glue combo continues to be very reliable. So I'm using four micro servos to individually control the thrust vanes. From a control and weight perspective, this is obviously less favorable, but it's mechanically much simpler. Like I said before, I'm using an MPU 6050 as a gyro unit, which is pretty outdated, but should accomplish what I'm trying to do. The wiring for all these components were a mess, but I was able to clean it up a good amount. In total, this first iteration weighed in at about 560 grams. The battery by far is the heaviest non-symmetrical component of this thing. The battery weighs about 150 grams, which is 25% of the total loaded weight. And so that's the design choice I'm going to talk about more, the most in depth. So I elected to put it on top of the EDF. The pros of this configuration is that it has easy balancing and is statically stable in flight. The biggest con is, I'm guessing, a very heavy reduction in thrust because it blocks the EDF intake. So with this relatively light design, I figured I could take some losses in thrust, which might be as mistake as you saw in testing. As for the static stability part, I'm not sure if this directly translates, but I know that for rockets, you want the center of gravity above the aerodynamic center. And with the battery this high up, I'm guessing this brings the CG above the neutral point, wherever that is, probably on the lower end of the EDF. That said, the only other alternative for battery replacement that I can think of is fixing it on the side and then somehow balancing it out with other components on the other side. But since I don't really have a bunch of heavy components, or at least things that fit the form factor of the battery, um, throwing it on the top was definitely the easier option here. The thrust vanes were made very quickly and without any testing. I think they're probably way too thick. The shape of the EDF housing essentially elongates the exhaust of the EDF. This either acts as a thrust tube, which straightens out and focuses the flow, or it can just act as dead space, which is a huge detriment to my thrust. Regardless, this is not a very aerodynamic and thrust considerate design. So I first coded this controller without a PID. My main goal was getting good angles from the MPU, combining the angles with the manual TX output if necessary, and then going from there. I was successfully able to read the iBus inputs from the TX, use a complementary filter to get good body angles from the MPU, and Lucy combined these to map values to each servo. Mapping the manual input took a bit of time, but it's actually pretty simple using the iBus library. So if I calculated the difference between these angles and then the zero axis, which is defined on startup, Mapping the error to the servos until the zero axis is reached again is actually pretty simple. 
This is where the PID comes in and I tried implementing one but either my tuning is just way off or I used the PID wrong because the response I was getting without the PID was a lot better than anything I could tune. I can keep trying and obviously I want to use the PID but for this iteration I ended up just sending it and using their complementary filter alone. With my very limited knowledge on controls in C++, I'm willing to bet that I'm just implementing the PID wrong. But I'm happy that I can get good angles from the MPU at least and then map to the servos in kind of the fashion I want to. So based on the testing, I'm guessing that balance is my number one issue. I figured that once I had balanced the battery, which is again the heaviest component by far, the unit would be fine. However, it's very clearly weighted on the Arduino side for some reason, and so I think the smaller components probably play a bigger role in the balance than I thought. And regardless of balance, I expected the monocopter to have a better throttle command than it did. I used about 80% of the throttle to even get off the ground, and it's clear that I need to kind of redesign the EDF intake, the exhaust, and the thrust vanes if I want to optimize the amount of power that I'm getting. Lightweight PLA is an option, but I catted this pretty loosely and I'm willing to bet I can shave off a good amount of weight just by redesigning it. In general, I think I underestimated how much the battery tower affects the performance of the EDF. It could also be suffering from ground effects. The EDF is only a few inches off the ground. This can be easily remedied with higher stands or something, but I'll figure that out. Anyway, this is pretty much all I wanted to say in this overview. Um, this is really giving me a cool look into a bunch of controls and propulsion issues. And I encourage you to kind of try it on your own, again, if you have a bunch of spare parts lying around like me.